How about using variables uh, to describe patterns in practice? And so in question one, what we have is we have two uh, input values, right? So these are the things that happen as the input goes in order to create the output. And you're tasked with writing it as an expression. And so I am just going to help give you the answer, right? So let's just first of all start with just using the letter, let's say I, all right? That looks like an L, I. Okay, I is the input. So as I goes through this machine, you gotta ask yourself what happens. Well, what happens is you add three, right? But your next thing would be, well, you add three and then you multiply it by four, right? And I understand why that might be your gut because that's actually what happens. The input goes in, you add three, multiply by four. But if we remember, right, if we remember bed mats, brackets, and we, we have talked about this a little bit, and you should have talked about it with Miss uh, Sarah, is the first thing you do is divide and multiply it, which means that this would actually become 12. And that changes the answer entirely. So what you have to do is it is i plus three, but you need to insert some brackets. Right? Because that means you're doing that first, and then you can multiply it by 4. Alright? So it doesn't matter if you put i or a, but it should be in brackets, a plus 3 times 4. Remember, the reason why we put in brackets is because you want the brackets first, and the first thing you do is addition. I'm going to cheat, and I'm just going to copy and paste this in order to do it here. Okay? Same, so same thing here, right? We have the input, we're going to call it a though, the a put, the input, right? What happens to it first is we multiply it by two. Another way of representing this is by saying two a. Remember two a equals two times a. It's the same thing. So you have two times a and then you're going to subtract four, right? You, so this is the first step and then this is the second step, right? So because that's the first and the second, you do it to the first and the second. So the first thing you do is you have A. All right, how can we represent A as divide? Well, we can enter the divide symbol or we can turn it into a fraction, right? We're dividing by four. If you want to confuse, the first thing you can always put brackets around. That's annoying. Right, that's the same as A divided by four. Because remember, this is the first and the second is you're adding three, because this is first, this is second, one and two. Okay, I'm gonna try to speed this up for those who don't need this. All right, so how to solve uh, the following equations using numbers and or symbols. So uh, for symbols, what you can do, uh, it's I'm gonna find one that's a little bit easier. Uh, let's do it with this, but we're going to use red. Okay, with, with symbols, what you can do is you can draw. Okay, so I'm going to draw 10 circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then right in the middle here, right, where all these equal signs are, I'm just going to finish this, there's an invisible force field. Okay. On this side, there is three that we know, and then there is a question mark because we don't know what this is. All right, that's going to be a. So what we're going to do is we're going to create what's called zero pairs. What that means is we're going to cross out using blue. We're going to cross out some of these so we know what we're left with. So I want to get rid of, I want just the question mark. So I'm going to get rid of one, two, three. If I get rid of three on that side, I have to get rid of three on this side. Okay? Which means that you're left with, right? You're left with seven, which means the question mark or A will equal to seven. Okay, so that's how to do it with symbols. You just kind of represent it, and you either break them into groups, or you don't. Or you can do it with numbers, and you need to know that whatever you have here, 
when you need to pass it through the equal sign, but when it passes through the orange, it becomes a negative, right? Or you want to get rid of it. So how do I get rid of a positive 9? I need to subtract 9. What I do to one side, I do to the other side. So that becomes, so what, so what we're left with, right, so this is going to cancel out, okay? What you're left with is 2a equals 16, Okay, equals 16, right? How do we, what's the opposite of multiplication? It's division, right? So we have to divide by 2, which means we divide by 2, okay? That's going to cancel, sorry, it's getting right here, that's going to cancel this out, cancel this out, so A is going to equal 8, because 16 divided by 2 is 8. Now, uh, we'll do it for this one at the bottom, all right, we'll do one more. Same thing, okay? We have minus 7. How do I get rid of that? I want to add 7 to get rid of that minus 7, okay, which means that what I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. Okay, that becomes 3a equals 21. What's the opposite of multiplication? I have to divide by 3, which means I have to divide this by 3. A is going to equal 7. All right? Now, how do I see, know if this is right? There is a double away. This equals A, which means I should be able to replace this A with this A. And if I replace it and I get the right answer, then I'm right. So let's try it. So I can rewrite that as 3 and 7, because I'm replacing the a minus 7 equals 14. Okay? Do the brackets first. This will be 21 minus 7 equals 14. Right? 21 minus 7 is 14. If 14 equals 14, then you have the right answer, right? When two sides are balanced, which they are, you are right. So by putting it, the value back into the equation, you can double check your answer. Okay, let's keep going. This side, we have a negative, so for D, we have a negative X. We want this to be positive, so we're going to have to add an X. So what's the opposite of subtracting? We have to add, which means we have to add an x here. Okay? But we want the x by itself, right? Which means, how do you get rid of a positive 6? You have to subtract a 6. Which means you also have to subtract a 6 here. So this becomes 15 minus 6. Okay? That's going to equal to x. 15 minus 6 is 9. 9 equals x. Okay? All right. So remember, what we have is we have like an invisible. I'm just going to make this smaller. It's kind of annoying me how big it is. Do, do, do. Right there. All right. What we have right here, remember this is the thing, either you can do it as we've been doing it, just canceling it out until you have, remember you want the variable by itself, or you can do the crossover method. And all that means is that as it passes through the force field, it changes. So I want to put this to its other side. When I do that, it goes from a minus, what's the opposite of subtracting? It's addition to a positive. Okay, so that becomes 24 over x equals 3 plus 3 is 6. Now I want this by itself, right? What's the, this is, another thing for this is division. Right? A fraction is division. So I need to multiply, so I need to bring this over. The opposite would be multiplication. Okay? And that's going to cancel this out. Now, what I'm left with, or I should be left with, equals is 24 
equals 6x. So you got to ask yourself, do I have the variable represented by itself, which is no. I want this x by itself. How do I get rid of this 6 then? The opposite of multiplication is division. Okay, what I do to one side, I do to the other. x will equal 24 divided by 6 is 4. Right, so that is going to be the answer for here. Okay, last one, right? We're doing the same thing. I'm just going to block this off. Oh, brother, that didn't work. So it, it's already confusing enough. Okay, so once again, I'm going to first subtract this by 4. I'm going to subtract this by 4. Okay, so what that's going to be is x over 5 equals 1, because we want this to be x by itself, so we have to get rid of all these things by it. Okay, right now this is a fraction. Fractions mean division, right? Which means we have to multiply this by 5. What we do to one side, we have to do to the other. This is order to get rid of the division symbol. Right? That means x will equal to, you got it, 5. And you can put that back in, and you can figure out the values. All right, so this one I know you kind of got this cut off, so it didn't really work. But let's, let's do our best, okay? Marcia eats the same number. So what you're doing is you're matching the word problems with the associated uh, equation. Okay, Marcia eats the same number of oranges each day for four days. How many oranges does Marcia eat each day if she eats a total of eight oranges? So wait, so so far you know that she's eating a total of eight, which means you, need, you know that the answer has to equal eight, which already takes away this one, okay? She eats the same number of oranges each day, right? So we don't know how many oranges she eats, so we can represent that with an A, right? And how many days, so right, so she eats A oranges, one, two, three, four, right? Because there's four days, that's how many total. We either can write this out as that, or remember, we talked about this already, or you can represent it as 4a. Those are the same things. So 4a will equal to 8. Is there anyone that says 4a equals to 8? It is. It's right there. Right? So remember, we have this because she has a number of oranges, 4 days in a row. So we're adding them together because we're trying to find the total. So either you can have it as a plus a plus a plus a, but they're the same amount. So you can also represent that as 4a. Samuel has four more science books than his friend has. Samuel has eight science books. So we know that Samuel has eight books. He has whatever his friend has. So let's say his friend has a book, right? His friend has a, we don't know how many they have, but Samuel has four more. Well, four, well, the thing plus a will equal to how many books Samuel has, right? Because we're trying to figure out how much his friends have. We don't know how much his friends have. So is there an A? Yep, there is. It's right there. Next, a group of students is divided into eight teams. Well, I'm going to give you a hint right away. There's only one here that has anything to do with division. Remember, a fraction equals division. Okay, so that's going to be C. Now that brings us to only one more chance. That's got to be D. Find the missing element for each table of value. So we need to say, how is the input related to the output? Okay, so we know that these are, so far that's going to be an increase by 2, right? If it's a pattern, which it should be, then we should know that this will be 24. Right, we know that because it's increasing by 2. Okay, and that keeps the pattern going. Now, how does it get from 1 to 20? Right, that's really helps the way that this value that we have right here. Do do do. Do do do. 
Okay. Next, we have, let's just do the missing values for now. Okay. We are increasing by 5. We are increasing by 5. So this should be 15. Okay. So far, so good. So I just I've got to stretch my back. Crack my back. Okay. We have five in here. All right, let's go to the pattern rule for B right now. Okay, so we have 10 and we get to five. So now we just got to list the ways that we can get there, right? We can, what are, how can we go from 10 to five? Since it's lowering, we know it's either division, right? Or it's going to be subtraction. Let's start with subtraction. 10 minus 5 is equal to 5. So now we just got to see if that works for all of these. 15 minus 5 equals, well that checks out. 15 minus, 20 minus 5 equals. So I think we got our clue. It's going to be minus 5. So the pattern rule is you're going to subtract Five. Okay. So let's look at now A. I'm not going to lie. I took a look at it and I immediately forgot the answer for it. And maybe right now it is an actually very difficult question. So once again, working it out together, beautiful, beautiful thing. Okay. So we're going from one to 20. It is increasing. So right away, because it's increasing, you know the very first thing is going to be uh, either addition or multiplication. All right? So maybe you're going to times by one. Nope, that won't work. I'm gonna get back to this one, all right? You won't see this on the quiz anyways. I gotta think about this, okay? I know I knew this. I promise you I did times by 12 minus 2? Nope. You gotta think about it. Okay, next thing here. All right, so this is the table of values. We need to find the error, okay? So there's something wrong here. So there's a way that these relate, okay? These all relate in a certain way. Which one is the error? Now, if I was a betting man, I would just do this, all right? Are we increasing are we decreasing there's got to be a pattern okay so from here to here we're adding one from here to here we're not doing anything from here to here we're adding two how can we make it so that we're adding one consistently we got to change this to a five right now you have the pattern of adding one at each stage okay what is the pattern rule that relates the input to the output below? So right, right away we're going from 6 to 3. So either we're subtracting or we're dividing. Right? So we can't divide by 2 because 7 divided by 2 is not 4. We could subtract 3. All right? One way is we can subtract 3. Okay? We know it's subtraction because it's going down. 7 minus 3 is going to equal to 4, so that works, right? 8 minus 3 is going to equal to 5, so that works. 9 minus 3 is equal to 6, so that works, right? So it's going to be subtract 3. So once again, when I'm finding the errors, I'm looking at the patterns of the input and the output. So going from 8 to 4, right? We are increasing by 6. So 18 to 24. Going from 24 to 30, uh, 30, we're increasing by 6. I already see a problem. 30 to this, we're increasing by 2, so we have to change that to 36. Okay, next we're seeing how does 18 relate to 3? Well, 18, 3, it goes down. So either it's going to be subtraction, 
in the first one at least, or division. We have two choices, either it's minus 15 or divide by 6. So let's try it out. So it works for both, but if we go 24 minus 15, it's going to give us 9, so it can't be this one. Right? 24 divided by 6 is going to give us 4, so that works out. 24, a uh, 30 divided by 6 is 5, so that works out. It looks like divide by 6 is going to be our answer. Alright? Okay, last one of these. Sorry, I know this is a long video. A lot of long videos, my guys. Okay, so 2 to 4. We need to find the two values. Okay, so what we're doing is we're essentially finding what's up here and what's up here. Okay? So 2 to 4, right? When we have 2, we have 4, right? It's increasing. It is an increase, okay? Which means that we know we're either going to be multiplying or adding at the top, right? So let's say that we're going to add. If we're adding, how do we get from 2 to 4? Well, we can add 2, okay? So let's try that out. If I add 2, that's going to equal... 5. 5 and 9 don't exist, so that can't be it. This is the guess and test method. Okay, so let's try then multiplication. Maybe I can get there through multiplication. Right, how do I get from 2 to 4? I can multiply by 2. Well, this might work. 3 times by 2 equals, well that's 6. Right, so that's also not going to work. So when the basics don't work, you know that it's going to be a two-step process. You already know that because I gave you the answer before, but this is explaining how. Okay, so 2 has to go into something, and then we most likely have to subtract. That's usually my next step. So let's go then 2 times 3. Okay, because we're just increasing the multiplication. 2 times 3, all right? That's going to equal 6, but I want it to equal 4, so I have to subtract by 2. So right now, I have times 3 minus 2, so that this can equal. Okay? So let's try it. Times by 3 minus 2. That will be 9, that would be 7. This also doesn't work. I know it's frustrating. But this is a trial and error. So we've tried times by 2, times by 3. Let's go times by 4. 2 times by 4 equals 8. Okay? How do I get from 8 to 4? I have to minus 4. So my answer right now is times by 4, minus 4. So 3 times by 4 equals, ow, oh, sorry, my neck, times by 4 is 12, minus 4 is not the answer once again. Whoo, 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 whoo. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, we're one step away. This is a long process, okay? So once again, we have 2. We have 4, okay? How do they relate? We've tried times by 2, times by 3, times by 4. Let's go times by 5. When we multiply by 5, that's going to give me 10. How do I go from 10 to 4? We have to subtract 6. I have a strong feeling. Do, do, okay? Let's try it, guys. Times by 5 is 15 minus 6 equals 9 times by 5 is 20 minus 6 is 14 so the operations is you first is you multiply by 5 and you need to subtract by 6 all right so again how we tested it is we knew it was increasing so we knew it was multiplication or addition 
And then from there we just kept going. We kept plugging away until a value eventually stuck. Now writing it as an expression, I have my a. What is the first thing I did to my a? I multiplied it by 5. After that, I subtracted it by 6, and that's my expression. We can go over these if you want individual ones. Uh, I'll put the answers below, but I think that's the end of this video for now, all right? If you have any more questions, please let me know. This is awkward. I'm trying to end this video, but the app's not working, so that's pretty cool.